All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. I've been doing a series of video presentations for the Rankin Technical College AWD Application and Web Development 1111 .NET Framework with Web Databases class. I'm basing this off of our textbook, ASP.NET MVC with Entity Framework and CSS by Mr. Lee Naylor. And so far I've gone through Chapter 1, Building a Basic MVC Website, Chapter 2, Creating Views, Controllers, and a Database from Model Classes, Chapter 3, Searching, Advanced Filtering, and View Models, Chapter 4, Ad More Advanced Data Management, Chapter 5, Sorting, Paging, and Routing, Chapter 6, Managing Product Images, Many-to-Many -many Relationships. So in other words, we've got a great start for our MVC baby database. We are able to uh, work with products, we are able to work with categories, we are able to work with images. Now, in Chapter 7, in the authentication and authorization using ASP.NET Identity, I've been running into several problems. I've tried to fix these problems, but haven't been able to. So Chapter 7 is sort of a deviation from the rest of the book so far, in that it's working with something um, that's not part of the project per se. So what I've decided to do was to go over here to page 185 because what I did was I went through about the first 10 pages of the chapter. So I talked about authentication and authorization and the differences between them. We did go in and created an empty project and in that empty project we went out to NuGet and we uh, added the Microsoft.asp. I'm sorry. We added the Microsoft.asp.net.identity.sample package that is shown right here. All right. Then we looked at the code that was automatically generated for us. After that, we went back in and we added to the identitymodels.cs file. We added a new class right at the bottom. All right. Then we updated our connection string as shown here. Now, they said the following code shows the default connection string listed in the, the project's web config file. Mine wasn't identical to this. This is a timestamp with the current date and time on it. Mine did not have that. I don't think, personally, that was a big thing one way or the other. Could I be wrong? Definitely, I could be wrong. I don't think I am, but I could have been wrong, sure. So, this is what happened. I went in and typed in admin at babystore.com and just put hello123, comma for the password, and it came up with invalid login attempt. Everything was looking great. All right? Then I expanded and looked and noticed that I did not have an app data in my project, an app data folder. So I created one in the Solution Explorer, ran it again, and then I did have not all of these files here, but I did have the ASP.NET Baby Store. And when I opened that up, I did have these files as shown here on page... on the bottom of page 188. We went over what these different files, or, you know, these different tables, I should say, in the database were, okay? And then we started talking about roles, okay? And adding a role manager. So I went in and did this. And went in and changed the seed method to add basically a new role, all right, and we set up a name, so this is the login name, and then this is the password, and then this was the name of the role. Everything was looking fine. Added the rest of the code here, and as it said, this code was to add a new class to initialize the identity database with an admin user, with the username admin at mvcbabystore.com, 
and the password admin with a big A and the number one instead of an I at mvcbabystore.com. All right, I did all that stuff. And then I went in and it said, we need a way to call this. So go back to the identity model and add this. As it says, set the database initializer, which is run once during the application start to seed the database with admin user credentials. Everything was looking fine. Then we were told to go in and change our web.config file so that it looked like this. I did that as well. Then I went up to start the website, but rather than having me get into it like this, with a message here saying that I was logged in, etc., I still got the invalid login. So, I'm taking a short story and making it long, but what I have decided to do was to bring up the project, that, that's the baby store, but I've decided to bring up the project from the actual textbook. Whether this is a right thing or a wrong thing to do. All right, so I've decided to bring up the Chapter 7 source itself. So with that said, I'm not going to be adding code, but the code has already been added. So I'm going to walk you through what's in here. All right, hopefully that made at least a little bit of sense. So one last time, and I mean last time, taking this from the top. All right, with this project loaded in here and with the identity, you know, all this stuff set up as it was supposed to be. All right, if I go notice and app data now, I've got the baby store, et cetera. They're both in here. What did the author do that I didn't do? I'm not sure. But I'm looking in here and in my identity models, again, this is, under my models, let me close anything, well, just about everything I've got open. All right, in the models and in the identity models, down at the bottom, I added that public class exactly the way that I had done it. So. This is the same stuff exactly, all right, the same stuff exactly that is shown on the bottom of uh, page 186, all right? Then we have in our web config file, we've got our default connection. Don't worry about the other one. We'll talk about that one later. But this was basically set up the same way that mine was. All right. Now it's got an identity two in there instead of an identity because I think they, they go and make some changes with it later on. I'm just, again, trying to review how theirs is very similar to mine. Now, when we bring it back up again and we look in here, all right, and we bring up this identity database, let me just refresh. Uh, let me see if I can bring this up. All right, and I bring up here the users and I go in and show the table data. Okay, as of looking at it right now, it looks pretty much the same as mine does. All right, you show the table data, etc. That looks pretty much the same. All right. But what they have done in theirs is, again, adding that role model. So let's bring up that identi identity config file again. All right. And we've got the application role manager. And 
and there it was. This looked exactly the way mine did. I looked for any differences. I could not see any. All right, so that was good. Then we were supposed to go into our startup auth file, and in there we were supposed to add a brand new role manager. This, I mean, could this be where mine was screwed up? Of course it could. All right. But there's their role manager. Now they've got a DB context, a user manager, and a sign-in manager. Did I have all those? I don't know. Okay. And just to, to satisfy my own curiosity... DB context, user manager, role manager, and sign-in manager. Now mine were uh, flipped here, okay, because I already had the role manager in there. So would that have mattered as far as the order? Or having the sign-in before the, the role? I wouldn't think so, but heck, you never know. All right, finally... In that identity model.cs file in here, you're supposed to come in and add the highlighted. Let's see. right here you're supposed to set this and put in this database dot set initializer and the DB context okay well the difference is just so you know this the difference is that when we come in now and we run theirs And you log in. Same exact thing that I did. All right, so there's the admin. And here is capital A D M number one N at M V C A D M one N at M V C B A B Y S T O R E dot C O M. All right, and you log in, notice the difference. You're logged in. All right, so the admin user and role evidently have been created in the identity database. All right, so it looks as though this is in here. Now let's stop the run. Let's stop the run here. Let's again look in here. Now it says admin at example.com. I'm not sure why we're not getting the MVC baby store in there. All right. I mean, I can refresh, but I don't think that's going to do squat. So I can refresh here, and I can come in, and I can right mouse click and refresh here. All right. But it's not showing that. 
The point is, though, I'm able to log in. That's the key thing. All right, and that's got my users. And then over here are my user roles. Right? Why is that different? That looks virtually identical to what I had. Why could they log in and I could not? If I knew that, I wouldn't have spent so much time trying to get mine to work. So mine did not work. Theirs does work. And since this is not our project, but this is a different project that we're working on, this identity one, I've decided to use the one in the book so I can stop spinning my wheels. All right. All right. Adding a roles view model and roles admin controller. Please again be cognizant of the fact I already have this stuff. I already have this stuff in there, in the system. All right. So I'm not going to be doing a lot of typing. Rather, I'm going to be explaining stuff that was in there. So the first thing we're going to do is to allow users to view and manage roles is to create a view model for a role. We're going to deviate slightly from the way the MVC sample code does this and put this class in its own file. To create a view model, add a new file admin view model to the view models folder and update it as shown here and here. So let's go in. Check in our baby store. Go under our view models. I got a lot of stuff open here, so I'm going to close some of it. All right, go into our view models. And we've got a. We want to add a role view model, they say, as follows. Now, I'm looking in here. Did I bring up the wrong project? I'm thinking I did. I am going to take my project that I'm working on, my BS2, save it, and close it. Because I don't want it, there to be any problem between this one and the other one. All right? I don't know if I keep clicking that. I don't know why. All right, so here's where we were. Now, I was under the presumption that this was a finished product, but I'm looking here under View Models, and it says we need to add a new file named Admin View Model, and there it is. All right. And we need to update it as shown on the bottom of page 193 and the top of page 194. As you can see, we have an ID and a name. All right, the name is required. Allow empty strings is false. And the name will be roll name. <clears throat> Next, we were told to add a controller by right-clicking on the controllers folder, choosing Add Controller, and in the scaffold, do an MVC with read-write actions. All right. Click the Add button. Name this Roles Admin Controller. Click the Add button again, and it should then have for us automatically the CRUD stuff. So it's got an index, the details, the create, the edit, and the delete. And it says, first of all, add this statement at the top of the roles admin controller. The using Microsoft ASP, so you want to make sure that it knows you're using Owen. But let's come back here. Let's close this one. And again, under models. Right. 
and there's our account view model. Now under controllers, we want to come in and we want to call this roles admin controller. There it is. We want to make sure that we do the using and have with our using in there Microsoft.ASP.net.identity.owen. All right. Then we're told to come in and add a constructor right there and properties. This is all the code on page 195. All right, after adding all that, the author comes in and says, now that the role manager and the roles admin controller are available, we can get to work setting up roles. The first change we're going to make is to the roles admin controller. We want to update the index method to return a list of roles from the system. So if we look at the index, The index method under controllers, roles, admin, controllers, we want to return There it is, under our index. We want to return A list of all the roles in the system and that's what that line of code is doing next we are to go in and create a view for displaying the roles all right and we came in and they actually wanted us to create an empty view one without a model okay and then so under views roles admin I believe the first thing they changed or we looked at here was in the index thing that was right here all right this is the code that's shown on 196 and 197 it creates a list of roles based on the model and notice what we have up on top here we've got then the model is I enumerable, and then in brackets, Microsoft.ASPNet.IdentityFramework.IdentityRoles. All right. Next, we are supposed to close the browser, make sure that we're logged out of the system, right-click on this view, and choose View in Browser. So... Let's save everything. Let's make sure that we are not logged in at all on here. You can see we're not. All right. So I'm right mouse clicking on index and I'm choosing view in browser.
And this is how the rules, I'm sorry, rules admins admin index page looks like without logging in. All right. It does look like I'm still logged in, so I'm going to log off and try it again. All right, so I am logged off. Now I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to come back in here and run this again. All right. I don't want to come in and log in, so I'm not going to do that. All right, rather, I'm going to come in here and instead of account, etc., I'm going to come right in here and after my local host, I'm going to type in roles admin. Not sure why it's giving me what it's giving me there. Remove this, remove this, oh, it's pushing me right to the login page. Well, let's try to close this. We're on the index page, save all, right mouse click view and browser and see if it's going to push me to the same area and it is hmm. now why could I bring it up earlier I could before come in here and just type in here roles admin It's not letting me do that right now. It's possible that I do have to be logged in in order to do this, but it's said to close the existing browser, ensure that you are logged out. Right click in the view file and choose view and browser. That's what I did. But it's not letting me view it in the browser. It's sticking me under account. So let's just go to here and now see if we go to roles, admin. No, it's still pushing us there. Don't understand this. But you did see it the first time I did it. So like I said, my goal here is not to spend this entire period or this entire, uh, I'm going to be here for three or four more hours and to sit there and just be stuck on this page. So I'm going to lumber on. And again, when I first did it, you did see this. Mine said admin and it said users. All right, but you saw that. Okay, adding authorization at a controller class level. So at the moment, anyone can anonymously view the roles available by going over to URL roles admin slash index. It says to change this so that only the user can, 
Okay, we're going to add some authorization to the roles admin controller class. To enable that, what we were supposed to put at the top here is authorize roles equal admin. All right. My guess, it says, now build the solution and try opening the Unix view again. You will be asked to log in. Probably that's why, because this line is probably already there in the uh, roles admin controller. Let's verify that. So we are, there's the roles admin controller. There it is. That's why we're being, you know, um, we're being asked to log in. So let's see what happens when we log in here. So in other words, is this running? I don't believe so. Okay, yes it was. So let's get stop the run and let's run the program again. We'll save and we'll run now again, I'm on the bottom of page 197. We will be asked, we will be asked to log in. So we will put in our old familiar admin at mbcbabystore.com for both our login and our password. I think it's it is remembering it, so I'm logging in. Boom, I'm there. All right. Now with this roles admin, there we are. So admin, let's look. Admin, that's all it says. Details won't be any more than that. Users, same kind of thing. All right. All right. Next, to display the details for a role, including the users allocated for the role, we are supposed to add the following using statements to the top of our roles admin controller CS file. So let's stop the run here. Go down to the details method. There's our index. There's our create. There's our edit. There's our delete. Oh, I didn't see it. There we go. All right. And we're supposed to add the code shown on the bottom of page 198. And it's also shown on the screen here. The details method now becomes an asynchronous method. Let's look that up. All right, I'm at 33 minutes, so that's how we'll start the next lesson.